Hey guys, welcome back. I hope my last video helped you to learn about how to create the simple angular grid with its basic features. Now in this video, let's see about how to bind the data to the angular grid. You can either bind a local JSON data or a remote service URL to the angular grid and you can also bind the data through Ajax post or you can bind the observables to the angular grid with the usage of async pipes. Now let's start with binding data to the angular grid using the code. As we have already seen how to bind the local JSON data to the angular grid in my last video, let me start with a small intro about it here. So in case of binding local data, we usually have a JSON collection like this. Say for example, I have defined the product related details over here in this JSON collection and simply by passing this data collection to the data source property of angular grid will populate the angular grid with the appropriate records. So this is how the simple local data binding works. And now to bind the remote data, I need to replace this JSON collection with the data manager code. So here you can look on to the data variable has been initialized with the data manager instance. So in order to make use of the data manager, first I need to import the data manager from Syncfusion EJ2 data package. So I need to define the two mandatory options of data manager in order to work with remote data binding. So here you can look on to the URL option where I have defined the existing service URL. So this is nothing but the odata v4 service URL and in order to make use of this odata v4 service URL, I need to define the adapter type as odata v4 adapter and to make use of this odata v4 adapter, I need to import it from EJ2 data package as well. So this data manager code will send a post back to the server and return the collection of records. So I need to assign this data manager instance to the data source property of angular grid and simply save it now. And now you can look on to the angular grid populated with the records that are retrieved from the odata v4 service link. So here you can see each and every fields that are defined within that odata v4 service link is displayed on the grid. If you want to display only the selected columns on the angular grid, then you can define the specific columns that are to be displayed within the e-columns directive. Like you can see here that I am going to display the fields order id, customer id, ship city and ship name. So I am simply saving these changes now. And now you can look onto the angular grid simply displaying four fields. So just like the way we have passed the odata v4 service link over here, you can define any of the service links like a web API service URL or a simple odata service link or any of the restful services over here. While binding remote data to the angular grid, there are chances that you may want to send some additional parameters to the server side. So to send that additional parameters, you need to use the add params method of query. So here you can look on to this code where I have initialized the query class and access the add params method of it. So in order to make use of this query class, I need to import it first from the Syncfusion EJ2 data package. And then within this add params method, I have passed a variable status and its value as closed. Now I need to assign this variable param to the query property of angular grid. Let me save it now. Now you can simply open the network tab and look on to the custom parameter which is sent along with the data request header. So this is how you can send a custom parameter to the server side. And in case if you want to send multiple parameters to the server side, you can define the multiple add params method over here. So next we'll look on to a particular option with which you can perform all the grid actions at the client side. So within the data manager code, when I define the offline property and set its value as true, now you can make all the grid actions like paging, sorting, filtering and any of the CRUD actions to perform at the client side. So at this moment, there won't be any postback sent to the server side. So apart from performing all the grid actions at client side, there are chances that you may want to perform CRUD actions alone in the server side. So at this particular time, you can make use of the remote save adapter. So here you can look onto the grid code where the adapter type has been defined as the remote save adapter. And in order to make use of this remote save adapter, I need to import it from the Syncfusion EJ2 data package. 
and then the additional property json needs to be passed so the grid data should be converted to the json format and then needs to be passed to the json option of data manager and then to perform the cred operations at server side you need to define the insert url update url and remove url properties of the data manager so you can refer the further steps and code to work with the remote save adapter from the documentation page which i'll share in the description part below apart from these built in adapter types you can also build your own custom adapter so now let's see how to create our own custom adapter by extending the built in adapters so here you can look on to the custom class name that extends odata v4 adapter and within this class name i have overridden the process response method and added the code logic to add an additional field serial number to the grid records so you can look on to the code logic over here where i have appended the serial number field to all the records of angular grid and then return the result with the combined serial number field now i'll define the usual data manager code over here with the appropriate url option and now the major difference is to assign the custom defined new adapter class name over here so you can see here that i have defined the custom defined adapter class name to the adapter option of data manager now to display that newly added serial number field on the angular grid i need to bind that serial number field through the e hyphen column directive as defined over here and you can look on to the angular grid displaying the serial number as its first field now let's see how to load the grid data through ajax post here i have simply removed all my existing code to have the better clarity to discuss about the ajax binding so you can prefer this ajax method if you want to dynamically load the grid data to demonstrate the ajax binding in this example i'm going to place a button on the page and here you can see i have bind the click event and also set the label of the button as click so when i click on this button only then the grid data should be retrieved from the server with the help of ajax request and then i need to pass it to the data source property of angular grid within the on success event of ajax let's see how to do it through the code as i said earlier that i'll be assigning the data source property of angular grid within the success event of ajax post so i'll be removing the data source property already defined over here and to set the grid properties dynamically i need to set some specific id for this angular grid and now to access the instance of the grid within the app component class i need to define the view child decorator over here to make use of this view child i need to import it from angular core package and to access this grid component type i need to import it from ej2 angular grids package so now i'll define the code for the click action of the button i am accessing this grid instance within the click method and define the ajax code over here to make use of the ajax code i need to import ajax from syncfusion ej2 base package so here i have passed the existing ej2 service url and i am sending the ajax request with the code ajax.send and within the on success event of ajax i have passed the string data into json format and then assigned it to the grid data source now i simply remove the serial number field which is not needed over here and also the query property so just save your application now you can look on to the angular grid which is not displaying any of the records over here so when i click on this particular button you can see the grid records are dynamically fetched and displayed accordingly so in this case when you bind the grid data source through the ajax post it will act as a local data source and you cannot perform the server side cred operations with this type of data binding now we'll look on to the final topic on how to bind the grid data from an observable object along with the async pipes so in this case i'll use the async pipe to subscribe to the observable object and then i'll resolve it with the latest emitted values i'm simply removing all the unwanted codes from here to have a better clarity with the observables example now let's see how to work with these observables here i assume that you are all familiar with the observables topic so in this example i'm going to use the angular in memory web api so that i can simulate the server and return back the mock data using the http requests 
Let me tell you what this Angular in-memory web API will do. By making use of this particular Angular in-memory web API, I can make an HTTP request and get the grid data from a local in-memory data store. So instead of going to the real backend remote server, I'll get the grid data from a local data store. So to work with this Angular in-memory web API, first I need to install it using the command npm install angular in-memory web api hyphen hyphen save and hit the enter button. So this command will install the angular in-memory web api and add it to the dependency list of your application, which you can check from the package.json file over here. So the first thing is create a class ngg class and I have defined the class name as product model. So simply hit the enter button. Let me define few of the needed fields within this product model class. And next I need to create a service file with the command ngg service and I have given the service name as product data. Simply hit the enter button and this will create a service file. So here I'm going to implement the in-memory DB service inside this newly created class, which will serve as a service. So to implement this here, first I need to import this in-memory DB service from Angular in-memory web API package. So before making use of this in-memory DB service within the service file, I need to import it from Angular in-memory web API within the app module.ts file and also need to register it within the imports array of ng module section. Also, you can look onto the code here. I may need to configure the for root method, which accepts the class name that implements this particular in-memory DB service. So I'm just passing this class product data service into the for root method of in-memory web API module. So this will be used for redirecting both the Angular HTTP and HTTP client calls to the in-memory data store. And it will also create the in-memory database as well. So to access this class within this app module file, I need to import it from the product data service file. And now I'm going to override the create DB method with the collection of product related data. And also I made it to return those collection at the end of this method. So to access this product model class, I need to import it from the product model class file. So the data is ready now to be retrieved from the local in-memory data store. Now to retrieve the data from this store, I need to create the actual service class. So I'm going to create a service with the command ngg service and the service name as product store. Simply hit the enter button. Now let me open this product store service. Now I need to make this particular class extending the subject with which we can both emit the values as well as register the subscribers. So to extend from subject class, I need to import it from rxjs package. And you can see here the type enclosed as data state change event args. I'll tell you later why we are using this particular data state change event args over here in the later part of this video. So to define this type, I need to import it from ej2grids package. Now within this service, I'm going to define the remote API through which I'm going to access the service data. Next, I need to inject the HTTP or HTTP client service over here within the constructor to enable the data communication. So to define the instance of HTTP client, I need to import it from angular slash common slash HTTP folder. And also I have defined the super method over here to have access over the parent. And the next crucial thing is I'm going to define the get products method, which is of type observable to retrieve the data, which is received through the remote call. So you can see here the get products method is of type observable. So to define the observable type over here, I need to import it from rxjs package. And also I have made use of the map operator within this get products method. So I'm importing it from rxjs slash operators path. So looking onto this particular method get products to read the data, I'm going to use the http.get method inside the service with the help of the observables returned from the created product model array and also the remote call. And also I have used the pipe and map operators over here to read the emitted data and I have also returned it in an object format mentioning the result and count specifically. 
This is because the Angular grid source processes the remote data binding concept based on this particular format. And this is why we have defined the type data state change event args at the beginning of the service class creation. So it is an interface that comprises of specific property collections like result count and so on. So that's all about the get products method. Now we need to subscribe to the returned observables. So here I have defined the method execute where I have called the subscribe method to the observables returned by the method get products. So that's all about the changes that you need to make with this service file. Now let's move on to the app.component.ts file. So here you can look on to the app component class that implements on in it. So it has the ng on in it method. And to implement this on in it class, you need to import it from Angular core package. And now I'll define the observable variable over here to access the service instance. So to make use of this observable type, let me import it from rxjs library and I'll also import the data state change event args from the ej2 grids package and I have defined the constructor and passed the product store service over here and assigned the service to the observable variable products. Now within this ng on init method, I'll make a call to the execute method which holds the subscribe code. Also, you can notice here that I have passed an object that includes the values to skip and to take. So the skip indicates the first n records that are to be skipped and the stake indicates the next n record count after the skip value to be taken from the data store. So I am passing these as a parameter to this method so that the records are retrieved and returned from the observables based on these passed values. Now the final step is I need to assign this products variable to the data source property of angular grid. And also you can notice that I have passed the async pipe over here. So this async pipe subscribes to an observable and returns the latest value it has emitted. So whenever a new value is emitted from the observables, this async pipe signals the component to check for that particular changes. Now all is set, so save your application and run it with the command ng-serve-open. Now when I try to open the angular grid output on the browser page, you can look onto the console error about the HTTP client. So this is because I have missed to import the HTTP client module from angular common HTTP folder within the app.module.ts file. So now I have imported the HTTP client module as well as registered the same within the import section and saving my application again. And now you can look on to the output page where the grid is populated with the data that are bind from the observable array. So that's all about the observable data binding. To recap what we have seen so far, we have simply looked on to the different ways of reading grid data from remote data services as well as from observable arrays. So in my next video, let's see about how to perform the server side CRUD operations and editing with the angular grid. Thank you for watching this video and if you find the information shared in this video as helpful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel as well. Also if you have any clarification or doubts with our angular grid, please don't hesitate to post in the comment section below. Thank you.